Next is the brand new raid boss added to the God Wars dungeon as the representative of Xeros. Up to 60 players can fight next at once on a world, with them having added group instances recently, allowing any size teams desired with your friends, as long as at least one of you has the hard combat achievements done. What are the requirements for Nex? There's a mini quest called the Frozen Door, which is required to gain access to your dungeon. To be given this quest, you need to have completed Desert Treasure and have a message delivered to you by an NPC similar to Regicide. This quest requires you to defeat each God Wars dungeon boss for their respective key piece, or optionally their minions for a one-fifth chance of the fragment instead, in order to craft the key to gain access. This effectively means you require 70 hit points, ranged, strength, and agility in order to even get to Nex. For softer requirements, for masses you can easily kill Nex with as little as 80 ranged. For smaller scales you want as high a ranged level as possible, at least in the 90s is ideal. A high prayer level is very helpful, as more prayer points per dose of restore will help you stay longer. High agility is handy to avoid needing stamina potions. And high melee combats are very helpful, as well for things like hammer and BGS specs. Nex has KC just like any other God Wars boss. You'll see Ancient has been added to the God Wars KC interface. The room outside Nex requires an Ancient item to be equipped in order to avoid the aggro of the Ancient enemies outside a room. What is unique to Nex is after getting your KC, you enter a lobby room right before Nex with a bank that allows you to gear as you please before fighting her. Each enemy provides more KC than you would normally get. I recommend killing Spiritual Mages, or if you don't have the spirit level, Blood Reavers, as you receive the most kill count from each of these. Disclaimer! We do not currently know Nex's stats, as we cannot cast Monster Examine on her yet. I know for certain she has 230 magic through the majority of the fight, as you have a max hit of 70 with Tebow without Zerat Vambraces and 72 with, meaning she must have 230 magic. We have no idea what her defense is and how far it can be drained, but through testing I know it can be drained and isn't regained until the end of the fight, as vulnerability cannot be recast after successfully landing. Vuln can only be recast once the monster has full defense again. The wiki has crowdsourced some data on her defensive values, so I can make rough DPS calculations and feel confident enough to release this video now. Currently, it seems absolute best in slot is Max Melee Torva with Rapier, which is over 35% higher DPS than Zerite Crossbow. And Dragon Warhammer seems very ineffective. We don't know how ineffective. I'm going to split this guide into two sections, one for masses and one for smaller scale fights. Masses seem to be worse money currently, but much easier to get into. I would highly recommend downloading the next Nostalgia plugin from the plugin hub. Giving her attacks the original voiceover is a really good improvement. I'm going to discuss Nex's general mechanics here, then go over setups and methods for both masses and small scale fights after. Nex is Xeros' general, so it's appropriate she has four phases relating to a spell out of the ancient spell book for each. Smoke, then shadow, then blood, and then ice phase. In general, Nex must first be damaged to a threshold, then her minion relating to the phase must be killed to progress to the next phase, repeating until the very final fifth Zeros phase, where you finish Nex off and claim your loot. For all of Nex's phases, Nex almost always starts with a special attack, and then there are always five regular attacks that happen before the next special attack. These regular attacks are calculated as Nex fires them for all phases except for the shadow phase. For that phase, it's when they hit you. All of Nex's bodyguards are capable of attacking you when they are vulnerable, with a max hit of 29, which are surprisingly nasty and accurate. All of their attacks are AoE Ancient Burst spells and magic based. You are completely safe from them when you are praying magic. The minions all have 200 mage, and Tebow is the best DPS against them. Each of them has a unique weakness. Fumus is weak to stab, Umbra is weak to ranged, Cruor is weak to slash, and Glacies is weak to crush. Although a Tebow is almost always the best option regardless. Next swaps targets every three attacks, and at any point can decide to enter melee mode and chase her target around the room, attempting to melee them. The target she chooses when swapping is always the farthest player from her that is within range, and if everyone is within the same distance, she picks the person with the least magic defense. If Nex is unable to attack the player for those attacks, she will dash to the center of the room and switch target. If all players are within melee distance, she will melee or mage her target, with what seems like a 50-50 chance of either. There is an altar in Nex's room that is the exact same as other God Wars dungeon generals. It can restore prayer points every 10 minutes and teleport you outside of the boss room. It puts you right outside the room with the bank. If wearing any ancient item when using the altar, 
The altar will also restore your special attack, run energy, and health. You cannot pray at the altar while in combat, but during certain phases it can be used. Usually you just want to hit it between kills. Should you die, your items will be kept in a chest, both in the lobby before the room to get KC, and in the room right before next with the bank, with reclaim costing 100k. Make certain you do not die before getting back there, you're just gonna lose everything, don't do it. At the beginning of the fight, there is a short pseudo cutscene where Nex retrieves the power of all four minions, and then is powered by the smoke minion. Nex cannot be damaged until the smoke minion's projectile reaches Nex, so make sure you don't spam clicker. This applies for all phase transitions as well. For the first phase, smoke phase, Nex will shout let the virus flow through you as her very first attack, infecting a single player with a virus. Who she infects is based on both magic defense and proximity. The further you are and lower your magic defense, the more likely you are to be chosen. The virus rapidly drains prayer points and your main attack style stat. The virus will spread to more players if they are within one tile of patient zero. The timer for the virus resets each time it spreads and has the potential to last the entire kill if not dealt with properly. The duration of the virus is shortened by wearing either a gas mask, face mask, or slayer helmet. Nex's second special attack is what I call the truck. Nex shouts, there is, where she will turn to face one of the four corridors, and then she will shout, no escape, and charge down the corridor she faced. This attack can only catch you for the very first check she shouts, no escape. If you are locked into another pseudo cutscene, this attack has already hit you. Once she begins charging, you literally can run through her if you want to. Nex has one final unique passive special attack for this phase I call Choke. She can grab random nearby players and drag them to her, toggling their protection prayer off. This is surprisingly dangerous if you get comboed by her throwing you a melee and the minion at the same time. When she is damaged to 2720 HP, Fumus in the northwest corner becomes vulnerable and must be killed to progress the fight. Fumus is capable of poisoning you as he uses smoke spells. For the next phase, Shadow Phase, Nex shouts, Darken my shadow, and again cannot be damaged until the projectile from the minion reaches her. For this phase, Nex attacks with ranged projectiles that are proximity based. These attacks can hit as low as zero if you are outside of the 10 tile range of Tebow when they land and a protect ranged up. Nex almost always starts this phase by shouting, Fear the shadow, causing shadows to appear under random players. If you don't move out of the way of these in time, they will hit you for a roughly a 50. For Nex's next special attack for this phase, Nex shouts, Embrace Darkness, where your screen will darken the closer to Nex you are. If within close range for too long, you'll be rapidly damaged for 10 to 20 damage. When Nex is damaged to 2040 HP, Umbra will become vulnerable in the northeast corner. Umbra is capable of lowering your attack level because he uses shadow spells. Umbra is by far the most dangerous minion, as you need to be praying ranged for this phase for Nex, and the minion is magic damage. For the next phase, Blood Phase, Nex will shout, Flood my lungs with blood. Again, she can only be damaged once the projectile reaches her. For this phase, Nex uses a unique Blood Burst attack that targets only a single player, but is AoE. Nex almost always starts the phase by shouting, a Siphon will solve this, entering an animation where any damage heals her. She also spawns Blood Reavers, the amount of which scales with the amount of players in the room. These Reavers attack with magic, and heal Nex for damage they would have dealt to you. They are incredibly slow and move at half a tile per tick, meaning you can avoid them by leaving their range. If the Reavers are not killed by the time she summons another set, they will die and heal Nex for their remaining HP. For Nex's next special attack, Nex shouts, I demand a blood sacrifice. Turning a random player red, this seems to favor nearby players. If that player does not get at least seven tiles away from Nex, Nex will hit the targeted player for about a 30, and any other players nearby for damage in the tens, healing for any damage dealt. When damaged at 1360 HP, Kruor in the southeast corner will become vulnerable. Kruor attacks with Bloodburst and heals for the damage he would have dealt to you. Nex will continue to use specials as you attack Kruor and can heal back up significantly in the meantime. For the next phase, Ice Phase, Nex will shout, Infuse me with the power of ice. Again, she can only be damaged once the projectiles reach her. For this phase, all of Nex's auto attacks drain significant prayer and are capable of freezing you if you get smited. For Nex's first special attack, Nex shouts, contain this, shooting icicles out in a square around her. If you are under her or within the icicles when this lands, your protection prayers will be toggled off and you'll be hit for around a 50. Your prayer can be immediately turned back on if you get hit by this. You can quickly die if you forget to do that. For Nex's final special attack, she will shout, Die now in a prison of ice. 
selecting a random player within range to be trapped within a square of icicles. This will toggle the targeted player's protection prayer off, which can be turned back on immediately. The targeted player is stunned, and if not freed by breaking one of the icicles outside with a crush weapon by another player, they will get hit in 80. This is easily her most dangerous special attack, and should you be far away from the group when targeted, you are almost guaranteed to die. There's a chance to fail to crush the icicle if your crush bonus of your weapon is not high enough, but you can spam click to reattempt every tick. The fail chance seems based on your weapon's crush bonus, even a godsword on crush is not guaranteed to free the player. I've never failed with a dragon warhammer. Don't forget even unarmed combat is technically crush and will work. The targeted player does not need to run out of the square of icicles. As long as an icicle is broken, you are 100% safe from the damage. They can immediately begin attacking again once broken. Once next is damaged to 680, the final minion Glacies becomes vulnerable in the southwest. Glacies attacks with Ice Burst and can freeze you even through protection prayers. Be very careful to avoid standing underneath Nex at this point in the fight, as she can use Contain this, and you can end up getting frozen underneath her, making the attack unavoidable. For Nex's final phase, Nex shouts, Now the power of Zaros. She will heal 500 HP instantly and activate the prayer's turmoil and soul split. She will no longer use special attacks, and all of her attacks' max hits are ramped up dramatically for this phase. Soul Split causes Nex to heal for damage dealt to everyone, Turmoil causes her melee attacks to be much nastier, and drain the targeted player's stats slightly. These should also transfer those stats to Nex, although I can't prove that. If a lot of players get melee during this phase, Tebow's max hit can increase up to 75 with Zerite Vambraces. Every four attacks, Nex changes her prayer, starting with Soul Split, then praying deflect melee. This is the exact same as protect from melee, but damage will be reflected back at you. Then taking her prayer off, and repeating starting with soul split again. Her defense seems to raise dramatically for this phase as well, increasing the more melee she lands. It is ideal for your team to enter melee range for this phase, as her magic attacks hit incredibly hard even through prayer, and melee only hits the targeted player, avoiding most of the damage should you get into range. You're going to see people in masses spamming MD, which means melee distance, or DD, which means death dot, often for this reason. The melee attacks seem more common, so it seems best to pray melee if she is targeting you, and magic otherwise. When Nex is finally killed, she will drop loot to all players, spreading the loot based on the damage dealt, with the MVP of the kill getting 10% extra loot. Nex often drops supplies, she has a supply drop of brews and restores, as well as sharks and prayer potions extending the trip dramatically should you get those. Her regular drops are also pretty good, specifically the Onyx Bolt drop can be a lot of money. Rare drops are 1 out of 53 from any given next kill. For masses you have some options. The best brain dead method is a Zerite crossbow with buckler or a spectral spirit shield. This is 5 to 9% better DPS than Tebow, and you have a good chance of sniping MVP occasionally with ruby procs. It also doubles as the best special attack option at next, which is also handy. The spec guarantees a bolt proc if the attack lands at the cost of 75% spec. If you're looking for a decent budget option, even ACB beats Tebow by about 2%, and Dragon Crossbow by 1%. In large 15 plus masses, I think this is your best shot at getting MVPs. In smaller masses around 10 people, I use the same setup as I use for very low scale. I walk in with Rapier, Slasher Burnick, Carols, Torva Helmet, Ferocious Gloves and Prims and Berserker Ring. Torva Helmet gives you a max hit over face guard, even if you only have a fire cape. Camping the Carols dramatically lowers the damage taken. Throw on a Blood Fury for good measure, and you have a ton of survivability. Tebow and ZCB are very similar DPS wise to camp because Tebow is a lot better on minions, but worse on the boss. But I have a Tebow, so that's what I'm showing. The setup beats Zerite Crossbow and Buckler by roughly 27%, and Carols with Blood Fury makes it just as survivable. If it's a solid mass without people trolling on P5, you can go all out with full Torva and Torture with 6-way range switch to Armadil for ranging, increasing max hit from 52 to 55. This setup beats CCB by just under 37%. The other nice thing about this setup is that Torva Helmet is a Zeros item, so it's impossible to forget to switch for the Altar. If no one else is meleeing in a small mass, you are almost guaranteed to MVP every single kill with this setup. That breaks down a bit in large masses because Nex dies too quickly to get a lot of melees off, 
and ZCPs take MVP very often because of bolt procs. The name of the game in masses is getting the most damage possible to secure MVP most often, giving the highest chance of getting the rare drop should one be dropped. I am certain damage not only on necks counts for MVP, but also damage on the minions, and likely also damage on the blood reavers. Look for a world with a virus tank if massing, or just low enough population you can just avoid the virus entirely. Otherwise you get cough kills, where everyone ends up getting the virus. Virus tanks go diagonally from one of the minions and strip their armor off or put melee armor on to guarantee they get the virus, quarantining and preventing the spread. If you are using the ZCB setup, there isn't a lot to it. Shoot necks, shoot minions, drop specs on necks when you have them, repeat until dead. In the melee setup, I start the kill next to necks, dropping two brews onto the center of her for later. I drop one claw spec as soon as a projectile hits her just to get special attack regenerating. Attack with Rapier until she is roughly 2800 HP, then run towards Fumus, swapping into Tebow, and taking off your helmet when you can. It's negative 5 ranged, which is not ideal. When Fumus is dead, stay in ranged for P2. You can optionally get two melee hits off on Nex as the phase starts, but that's pretty minor and dangerous. She always starts with a special attack, and not her ranged attack. Work your way towards Umbra while staying as far away from Nex as possible. When she's damaged low enough, Tebow Umbra until dead. Avoiding standing on the person Umbra is attacking will save a lot of health. Work your way back towards Nex. If she is far away, send a Tebow shot while running and switch back into melee. Melee a Reaver or two and get back on Nex if she spawned them. Claw specs are also pretty solid on Reavers as well. Rapier beats Tebow for deep yes on these just slightly. If she did five siphons, count five attacks and then flinch Nex to avoid blood sacrifice activating on you. It deviates to the closest player. If you get Blood Sack, run away, switch into Tebow, send a shot, and then run back, switching back into melee. You only need to run six tiles away to avoid Blood Sack. When Nex is close to 1400 HP, switch into Tebow and send Nex a shot while running towards Kruor. If you have a Claw Spec left, you can switch back into melee and quickly dump remaining specs on Kruor, then switch back into Bow, shooting him. Kruor is weak to Slash. Try to get in range of Nex as Ice Phase starts with melee. If you can't make it, just send a bow shot and then melee. If she starts with Contain This, just stab her once with Rapier. You have five ticks before the Icicles come out. And send two bow shots, getting back on Nex right after. When Nex is nearing 700 health, switch to Tebow and run towards Glacies, sending a shot at Nex as you run. Try to avoid standing near people Glacies is on, as getting frozen towards the end of this phase wastes a ton of DPS on last. When Glacies dies, get back on Nex with melee and start counting her attacks. Every four attacks, Nex changes prayers in this phase, and after her first four attacks, she will start praying deflect melee. The swing before she switches, immediately switch back into bow and send Nex three shots, switching back into melee again after. Don't get greedy and let your health drop below 30 for this phase. She can melee you at any moment and just insta-kill you if you are too low. Make sure you count four attacks again when she gets soul split back up, so you can switch back to Tebow. If you don't lose many ticks, this setup should consistently get you MVPs in smaller group sizes. Let's move on to a smaller group setup. 10 or less players you have communications with, 6 seems to be a sweet spot. I take the exact same setup, with some variation in the amount of super combats and ranging depending on how many people are in the group. In a round of 4 man, I ditch one of those super combats. Carols with Blood Fury really helps with the supply issues in lower scale, you use significantly less brew than if you were using full melee armor. One person on the team bringing a hammer is likely worth it. ZCB is a better DPS spec on Nex, but then also requires a bolt switch. Tebow is really too good to leave behind because of that minion damage. Make sure you pre-pot Divine Super in ranging, Shark and Angler, and Antidote and Stamina before entering the gate. To start a personal fight, the instance owner has to have at least the hard combat achievements completed and have everyone else in the group added. They must pay for the instance, then the other members can right-click the door and hit enter private, and enter the leader's username. Have the leader communicate when they are pre-potting, then immediately pre-pot and join them. The instance cost pulls from Death's Coffer first, so if you abuse the price of Blood Essence when next came out, you should be sitting pretty. In small-scale fights, avoiding damage and placing yourself carefully becomes important to extend trip length. 
These are a lot tougher and more complicated than masses, but much more rewarding loot-wise. We take a hex position around next to guarantee no spread of virus. These six tiles can all be used. It's likely worth trying to get a single hammer spec on next, as we know it trains something, just not how much. Using multiple hammers has had no difference on kill times in my testing. I'll definitely post how worth it this is in the pinned comments after the monster examine update, so check back there. Everyone else on the team should just drop a single claw spec to get the meter regenerating for some free DPS. Count the attacks as the fight starts. After next uses 5 autos, she will truck, so be ready to click perpendicular to where you are standing. Start moving towards Fumis, sending a TiVo shot as you run when Nex is under 2800 HP. Make sure you don't group up, as you will get another virus attack shortly. Shadow Phase requires a lot of solid coordination in order to not get comboed by Nex and Umbra. The goal is to lure Nex far away from Umbra, and then have someone keep Nex's aggro. I like to call this person the babysitter. Never go near Umbra early. This can cause Nex to dash there, and cause major problems once Nex's health is lowered. Once Nex hits 2040 HP, the first person to run into Umbra's range will take his aggro, and should pray magic and run right up next to him. Umbra hits incredibly hard and does not die quickly in smaller scales. The other players who are not targeted by Nex should all tuck in as close to Umbra as possible to avoid Nex targeting anybody near Umbra. Ideally, the next target should try and pull Nex as far away as possible as the other teammates attack Umbra. If the babysitter can keep Nex out of range of everyone else, she will no longer change target and just stay on that one person. If Nex is in range of the Umbra tank, the Umbra tank should attempt to stand as far away from Nex as possible while keeping magic prayer up. It is possible to flick magic and then range as Nex's projectiles hit, but this is very dangerous to attempt and kind of awkward because they're on different tick cycles. If Nex gets dragged next to you while Umbra tanking, you should pray ranged and immediately book it to safety. Basically, goal is to keep Nex far away from Umbra while also killing Umbra as quickly as possible. You can communicate with the babysitter to pull Nex closer when she is almost dead. Moving on to blood phase, goal here is to prevent Nex from healing as much as possible. Nex almost always starts with blood siphon and spawning reavers, so avoid insta-shooting Nex until you see the special attack. Hit each reaver once, sending them a claw spec if you have them, and then get back on Nex. Elect a janitor to clean up any leftover blood reavers to avoid wasting DPS over killing them. Reavers will heal Nex for their remaining HP if they are left alive until the next siphon. Because blood phase is single target attacks, this is one of the few phases where you can successfully trade supplies and or hit the altar if you need to. After this, it's almost impossible to help a teammate who is running low. Keep in mind, you don't want to stack for this phase, as all of Nex's attacks heal her, and they are AoE, so she will damage anyone stacked and heal extra. When you get blood sacrificed, try not to lose DPS, run 6 tiles while switching to Tebow, send the shot, and run straight back with melee. After Nex uses her blood sacrifice special, make sure you count attacks. Right before her 5th attack, make sure you off her. Being inattentive can cause Nex to heal a ton from your attacks. When Nex is pushed to 1360 HP, you can attack Kruor. If it's possible to kill Kruor before Nex's next siphon, kill Kruor instead of those Reavers. The Reavers all are instantly killed and do not heal Nex if Kruor is killed first. Moving on to Ice Phase. This phase heavily drains supplies as her attacks both drain prayer and your health rapidly. Stay relatively close to each other on this phase, as in the case of an Ice Prison, it's very difficult to free someone far away. When Nex uses Contain This, hit with Rapier one more time, then back off and send two Tebow shots, switching back into melee and getting back on her. If you get stuck in an Ice Prison, make sure you immediately put your prayer back on, as Nex's attacks are calculated as she fires them for this phase. You can avoid a lot of damage if you just quickly get prayer back on. You can also spam click Nex while well trapped, and as soon as you are freed from the prison, you're going to instantly attack Nex. When Nex is pushed to 680 health and Glacies is vulnerable, make sure you're not near or under Nex, as Glacies can freeze you, and when Nex uses to contain this, it can be avoided. Stay away from the person Glacies is targeting, or you can get frozen and lose DPS on the phase transition. Wait until Nex lowers her hands to attack her on the final phase. Rapier as much as possible, and pray melee if she targets you. Her melees seem much more accurate and much more common. 
She prays turmoil for this phase, which should in theory boost her stats and leech them to her each time she melees. She does train stats when meleeing, so that lines up. In practice, she is much tankier on this last phase. Count four attacks and switch to ranged after the fourth attack she does, as she will put up deflect melee after this. Do three Tebow shots, then switch back into melee. Make sure you keep track of your hits, as attacking on deflect melee not only wastes your DPS, but also reflects half the damage right back at you. After Nex is killed in small groups, you get a ton more loot, Usually at least double, up to quadruple the regular loot next would drop in masses. The kills tend to be 4-6 to six minutes, which is much more efficient than something like a 30-man team getting 2-minute kills, but this requires a lot more effort and coordination. In between kills, you can hit the altar for full stat restoration. I figure at least 4 brews each, or its equivalent in sharks, and 4 restores are necessary to complete another next kill. Make sure you communicate your supplies with your team and trade supplies amongst yourself if someone has extra and someone doesn't have enough for another kill. Once at a ranging pot, you should always end the trip. The longer you can keep a trip going, the more KC each of you will get and the faster you can get back in to start the next trip. Next has many rare drops. Her most common drop is Zerite Vambraces, a straight upgrade to Barrow's Gloves with two ranged strength along with 18 ranged attack compared to Barrow's Gloves 12. This will provide a handy prayer bonus. Nexus next drops all have the same drop rate. She's capable of dropping any piece of Torba, helm, chest plate, or legs, which is a straight upgrade to Bano's armor with a total of plus six strength bonus and better defensive bonuses, as well as slight bonuses to melee accuracy as well. The armor is dropped in a broken state and must be permanently repaired with broken down Bando's chest plates or tassies. A Bando's chestplate and tassies is enough to fully repair an entire set of Torva at the forge outside of Nex. Nex can also drop the Nihil Horn, which can create the Zerite crossbow, when attached to an Armadillo crossbow, creating the new best in slot crossbow. It has a passive boost to bolt procs, making them 10% more effective, meaning those ruby bolts can now proc 110 damage instead of 100. It also has a special attack that guarantees your bolts proc should the attack land, using 75% of the special attack meter. Finally, next drops the Ancient Hilt, creating the Ancient Godsword. This is her rarest drop, in line with the other God Wars bosses. It has a unique special attack that uses 50% special attack energy. The special has doubled accuracy and a 10% higher max hit. When used on a target, they will turn red and have 8 ticks to move at least 5 tiles away. If they don't make it, they will be hit a 25. That's reduced to 12 if they're protecting magic. And the user will be healed for the same amount. This is really only a PvP weapon, but it does have some solid combo potential. Rare drops are 1 out of 53 from any given next kill. Torva pieces are in the 200 to 400 mil range currently, the horn to create the Zeri crossbow dropped a bit to 360 mil, and the van braces are a solid 130 mil. Hilt is only worth 60 mil currently, but it's also the rarest drop, so you won't see it often. A given next kill taking only the rares into account is about 4.6 mil with the regular loot being really solid as well, with Dragon and Onyx Bolt drops as well as Blood Essences. You can take your kills per hour and team size and roughly guesstimate your GP an hour based on that. You can get 6 minute 4 man kills, Nex is currently well over 12 mil GP an hour, assuming 10 kills per hour. This is definitely going to go down in the future. Get your next kills while the getting is good. The next pet is one of the coolest pets in the game in my opinion, and it's my most desired pet right now. It's currently the only pet in the game capable of running, and it just looks sweet. The wiki has it at roughly a 1 out of 500 drop rate from Nex. We have no idea how the game selects who will receive the pet drop. I would imagine it's faster to grind the pet in lower scales than in masses, but right now we don't really know. And that's about it for the next guide. Good luck in the grind for Torva and crossbows. I definitely won't be leaving Nex until I have that pet and a substantial amount of cash. I have a clan chat, no monkey. Feel free to join as guest and ask for an invite. There are no requirements. I'm looking for more experienced Nexers to do small scale fights with. Leave a like if you liked it, and or subscribe. Thanks guys.